Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, just uh, moving on. Lots of supplies. You're talking about uh, an army zone that has received bombings over what Hiroshima and Nagasaki has received. Ten bags is nothing. When we go in with sixty thousand dollars, which of uh, of equipment, which I had in my group, that's nothing. This is a joke. When I go in, I find eighty plus fractures waiting for my orthopedic colleagues to be fixed because there's nothing to fix with. I get a girl, 10 years of age, sniper shot her in C6, leading to quadriplegia, and any hope for her to move is absent because there's no fixation. There's no, no rods. This young girl is going to have a... a very painful death for for a few months. A cancer patient with wounds never to heal. The amputations that you hear a lot are simply because the injuries in the core, they just die. I'm a, I'm a thoracic surgeon. When I go in, most of my patients are dead within hours if there's no one to, to receive them. Thoracic surgery is the most important speciality. More zones. Yeah? The maximum number of deaths that can be saved are chest injuries by a stitch in a big blood vessel. I go in and I get called for, uh, before even reaching my room of six in one room, I get called to review a, a nurse who was standing and had a shrapnel sever him full thickness down to the right PA, right main pulmonary artery coming out of the heart. He's 30 years of age. These are young patients. So they take quite a lot before they go. And we have nothing to, to clean the wound with. We used very simple sponges that you would sleep on at night, sterilized with a, a hole in the side, and stick it to a, a wall suction to try to save them. It's it's and what you hear from my colleagues are the stories that survived. Many more didn't. Many more didn't, and they died a, a painful death, a pa very painful, infected, ulcerated death all over. Yeah. I mean, I, I have pictures, but there's not much time to to show you. I mean, when you're sitting and all night you're hearing bombs, and then. Uh, an F-16 comes a kilo away and it sh sends a shrapnel severing the the head, the skull of a 10-year-old who thought he was safe on sitting and sleeping in the open air, in the rain, on the doorways of the European hospital just to find himself completely unconscious with irreversible brain damage. And uh, he's fortunate because he's never going to come back. He's never going to feel the pain. Yeah, the family will feel the pain, but he's going to die, like many others. And others with three, I mean, when you get a 30-year-old breadwinner and you amputate one of his uh, limbs and the other one is about maybe, maybe amputated, or the 17-year-old that you cut him uh, above knee both sides and hand him back to the family, and the wife is, is weeping and the other 17-year-old mo mother is Des devastated and, and we we just say these stories yeah we just say these stories and we go home we go home the whole world just goes home no one cares no one cares this world has proven that it is survival of the fittest yeah we're worse than animals you know at least a, a lion or a, a, a tiger will kill his his pred, uh, his 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 prey no, we're, we're, we're doing worse than that. Yeah? And these are all civilians. These are all, they have nothing to do with this. They have nothing to do with this. What can I say? Dr. Uh, Ahmed, yes, that uh, was really touching. What you were saying, even though we heard a lot and we watched a lot coming out from Gaza uh, during the past six, uh, past 10 months, but what you have uh, said now,
is really touching, really something as if we are hearing this and we are seeing this for the first time. But let me ask you, Dr. Ahmed, uh, just one question about this uh, kind of uh, uh, treating the civilians. And also I want to confirm this uh, uh, story about you could not meet or uh, treat any kind of military or uh, someone who's got out of a military uh, offense or something. So most, or let's say all, your uh, patients were civilians. That's right? Well, I mean, I'm going to stop you there. Yes, all my patients were civilians. But so what? So what? If an army soldier is shot and he's wounded, does that mean that uh, that's correct to leave him die of bleeding? Of course not. I mean, what what are we talking about? This is ridiculous. I hear these talks and this question over and over and over again. What type of ethics have we reached? I mean, I, I'm going to break the law. Is Hamas... I mean, I, I can go to jail now. I don't care. Yeah, Is Hamas a terrorist state for protecting and, and defending its people? I'm fed up of all this wishy-washy questions what are you trying to say brother these are yeah. people defending them of course we uh, i'm talking about what uh, For God's about sake, the everyone's israelis. turned his back on them k k as the israelis uh, claim that the these most of these areas and most of these hospitals so so you with... go to the thief or the killer and you ask him of course, uh, I, mean, I, about I just want to the, confirm his, your his, information. Uh, one that he killed him. Well, what, why do you why do you consider Israel as someone reliable after all these lies? Who believes I'm, Israel? I'm, 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 I'm just don't quote a liar, quote, brother. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to confirm your story, confirm their uh, lies, and to really authenticate this. Thank you very much, Doctor. Even if even even if I did I didn't treat any Hamas soldier. But if I did see any one of them, I would 